If you've ever felt lonely or lost or in a low place, have you wanted a roadmap to find the way out? We're going to talk today about getting a roadmap to finding your way from lost, lonely, and low. I'm your host, Tina Yeager. Flourishment is sponsored by Access More. Today, I have a beautiful and powerful young woman of God. Her name is Estella Kirk. She is mature bond here 17 years. She's bundled and abundant with talent. And she's just released an amazing new album, Running On Low. It's about knowing God, how he's always there for every step of your journey. And it includes lyrics that just chronicle and share God's healing through her former struggle of low self-esteem. I'm so glad to have you on Flourishment today, Estella. It's an honor. And I love that you're talking about this particular topic because this is close to my heart and it lines up with the messages that I write and speak about as well. So welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. It is just such an honor to share my story with you guys today. So people can listen to the words of your lyrics, but I would love to hear from you a little bit more about your personal story, because to look at you, even though you'll say you're all cash today, you look like just a beautiful young woman who probably never struggled with self-esteem. But from what you said in your bio, that may not be the case. So could you share with people a little bit more about what God has done to bring you out of a low place? Yeah, so when I was about seven years old, I loved music, specifically pop music. So that's all I wanted to do with my life um, until I was about 13 years old because I felt God telling me that I couldn't just do this for myself. I had to inspire other teens and I knew that I had a voice even if it was a small voice, um, but I just didn't feel confident with that voice. Like I struggled a lot with fear of just hitting certain notes or writing songs, whatever it was, I always walked into it with fear. That was until I stopped doing music for myself and I started doing it for God. And that completely changed my perspective and my view. I thought that if I could only help one person, then that was enough. I didn't need to impress all of these people anymore. It was just for God. So where were you in the music industry when you felt this pressure to perform? Yeah, um, so I was working with a lady out in California. She was super amazing. It wasn't anything that she did, but it was just, it was in my head and it was the devil telling me things that weren't true, just like how I looked or just everything that teenagers go through, honestly. So I really found that it was the lyrics that I was listening to that was putting those thoughts inside of my head. That's such a great point. So would you advise other teens to really pay attention to the stuff that they're listening to and check to see if it lines up with a positive view of who they are and who God is? Yeah, I think it's so important to know what you're putting in your mind because at the end of the day, it's like you are what you eat, that saying. It's the same thing as like you are what you listen to. So I just, I really, I feel like teens don't even know that or they don't even think about that. And so I just want to create an awareness of, you know, you can choose to listen to lyrics that empower you. And you are creating lyrics that are empowering for teens, for girls, and for just teens in general. And it's amazing. It's, your voice is incredible. So how would you advise some of the girls that would come up to you? Are you noticing that you're hearing from your fans that they experience self-esteem issues too, that you were not alone in the struggle? Yeah, I've had a lot of teens reach out to me and tell me that my music has helped them in their journey of feeling confident and beautiful and just confident in who Christ says that they are. And that's just my goal. I mean, as long as I can help one person feel that way, honestly, then that's enough. It really is. So, What are some things that you would say are keys and red flags to recognizing you might be being too hard on yourself? Oh, goodness. Definitely through scrolling through social media. 
I used to find myself all of the time just spending hours and then I'd put my phone down and I would feel awful about myself at the end of the day. And I would just start thinking about how much better these girls are that are on social media than me. And um, it wasn't until I reached out to God and I was like, God, why do I feel like this? And he was like, it's because you're constantly feeding your mind with social media. And so whenever I just took a step back and focused on what I was putting in my mind, I was able to change those thoughts. So the comparison trap is alive and well on social media. Any other places we need to be aware that it would be lurking? I mean, honestly, anywhere, anywhere that you let the devil get into your head, I would say for teens, especially like school and even church, like you wouldn't think that church would be a place, but it definitely can be. What are some other things that you hope to help empower teen girls to believe about themselves other than just avoiding comparison? Confidence. Since that's something that I've struggled with, oh gosh, since I was 12, I really want it to be confidence because I remember walking into a room with a group of girls when I was 12 years old and they were so much older than me and so much better at singing and dancing and I did not feel confident and it was the worst feeling in the world and I was like god what can I do to help other girls to not feel this way when they walk in a room and he was like it's the words that you speak and the songs that you write that you can help other teens not feel like that and so that's what I've been doing and I hope it's been helping teens even if it's just been helping one like I said where would you encourage a teen girl to center her sense of self-worth? Christ, I know that's that seems very um, cliche to say, but um, it wasn't until I started actually reading the Bible that I found confidence and I found truth because we can look for truth in so many other places. And oftentimes we do because it's so easy to just hear what somebody else says about you or pick up your cell phone. And it's these lies but they're so disguised as truth and they're disguised so well. So definitely picking up the Bible and reading truth and putting that into my mind every single day. It helped, it helped my day. It helped my week. It just started me out on the right path every day. Can you identify some of the specific traps that can get us off of that main road toward God-centered confidence and get us a little lost on the way. I think for teens, it's easy to get away from reading scripture and follow some of those other things, but they don't recognize that they're wrong. They seem like they're good enough. What are some of the things that they should avoid? It's definitely like the people that you hang out with or the, the music that you listen to, which I talk about a lot, but just the influences that are in your life really have a I mean they influence you so much because they're around your life all the time and whenever I took a step back and looked at who I put in my life I was able to I mean not necessarily get rid of those people I'm not saying that at all but I am saying to be aware of who you're putting in your life yeah, because you could still be friends with people who are not strong believers in order to be an influence, but you have to watch how much they're being an influence on you and make sure you have people that are positive influence that are you're hanging around more than you are with the people who might be kind of inclined to lead you in a direction that wouldn't be healthy, right? Right, yeah. Yeah. So with being a celebrity, you are pressed to want to be fashionable. Are there some traps that teen girls can get into with regard to just fashion? Because fashion by itself doesn't seem like a bad thing, but are there some ways that that can kind of lead them down a dangerous path? Definitely. Um, and once again, I believe that that is especially with social media. I mean, I found myself even today, I was looking for some graduation dresses and I was like, wow, all these dresses are not what I want to show. And I started realizing that all these dresses are what all of these girls are wearing, if that makes sense. And they're so common. And I just, I had to take a step back and be like, okay, wait, let's not look at these dresses. Let's not get one of these. <laughs> but it was just something that I thought about. And I was like, wow, you know, I didn't really think that fashion had that much of a toll 
on society, but it's really changed over the last year, of the last few years even. So, yeah. I mean, like these sixth grade girls I see at church wearing booty shorts sometimes and I'm like, wow, I didn't do that in sixth grade. And it's just, it's a different, it's a different time. Yeah, definitely. And, and when you, everybody else is wearing it, it gets to where you get desensitized by seeing it. And so you feel like, well, maybe there's nothing wrong with it. If everybody's wearing it, what would be some reasons to think twice about that? Well, I think God says that we're, we're clothed through him and we're to show that through what we wear and show the truth through what we wear. So I think just taking it from, that sounds cliche again, but taking it from a Bible perspective really helped me rather than taking it from a worldly perspective. Right. And it isn't just about being pious or being where you're looking down your nose at other people who might be feeling like they want to wear something more revealing because to some girls, they just think, oh, but I look cute in this. They're not thinking about what that other person's thinking, what their mindset is on when they look at them dressed that way, right? Right. And it it can be difficult. I mean, I'm not saying that this is an easy thing. This is something that I have to remind myself of every time I'm looking at clothes or I'm shopping online. It is, it's because it's so pushed down our throats nowadays in the world. And it seems so normal that it can be really difficult to take a step back and be like, hold on, this isn't exactly what I want to do or where I want to put my heart. So So do you notice that people treat you differently or think about you differently when you dress more modestly? I do. I, I think although it is a small town, I still feel like I get those looks of, you know, maybe some things aren't, I won't wear certain things. I remember being in an influencer group in California, an influencer group, (laughs) that sounds funny, but when I was in California and I was about 12 years old and all of these girls were wearing these tank tops, but they were super cropped, like super cropped. And my mom was like, um, are you going to wear that? And I was like, there's no way I'm going to wear that. I was like that. I've never wore something like that other than like a swimsuit. So I was completely caught off guard, but to all of these other 11, 12, 13 year olds, it was so normal. And I was like, wow, um, times are changing. And I don't feel comfortable even as a 12 year old girl wearing these clothes, but it seemed weird because everyone else, everyone else was. So I felt out of the ordinary and I felt like they did look at me like, why, why is she wearing something different? Like, why is she? And they were kind of like, you won't wear a tank top. Like it's just a tank top. I just had to move forward and, you know, know that I was confident in God and what he wanted me to do. And I knew that that was not something I was comfortable with. Well, it makes a statement about what you think of yourself, right? What you think of your worth. My worth is not centered and just what I look like physically to be used by somebody. I mean, you kind of need to help girls understand what is your worth and make sure that you're advertising where your worth is. Is it in my intellectual capability, in my spirit, in my personality, or do I feel like I need to advertise that my worth is in only my body and what my body can do to please men? And that, that is a dangerous road to go down, right? It is. Yes. But it's so easy to go down that road too nowadays. And I hate, I hate that it is, but it, it definitely is. And that's why there's so many teens getting so almost derailed I guess, because it's just so easy. So I want to help create music that says that you don't have to do that or help create music that talks about the effects of social media that I've personally had to maybe relate with some of those teens who feel like they're not good enough or that they have to change how they look to fit into a certain group. So how can people get their hands on your wonderful new album, Running On Low, and stay connected with you through social media, if they choose, or online in other ways? So you can find me on all social media platforms at Estella Kirk Music, and I have some new music videos coming out actually on YouTube, and that is under Estella Kirk. So glad that you came on the show today, Estella. I hope that all of you listening were encouraged and inspired and will run right out and go check out her amazing 
album. And of course, I also hope that you come back for the next episode of Flourishment.